Welcome. It is exciting to share pre-calculus with you on this Friday afternoon, and I'm glad that you have joined me this, this day. And, you know, I love to teach math. That's, it's what I do. I taught math in the classroom for many years. I taught sixth grade math and geometry already for BGU Press Distance Learning. This is my third opportunity to teach a class. And we have this beautiful brand new pre-calculus book. This is a new book. This is practically still warm right off the press. And uh, we actually are able this year, this is something kind of unprecedented for us, to actually get the book and the video course done in the same year. Now some things fell together for that. That's not something we're going to be able to do on a regular basis yet. But we are so glad that we were able to put that out there for your students to use starting this July. Now, like I said, I love math. I enjoy teaching math. And you know, I went to the YouTube page where they had all these samples of focus on fives and Spanish three, which is coming up a little bit later this afternoon. All these nice sample lessons. And I'm like, we're missing one. Then they explained to me that you, know, you were the last one to actually start recording of all those teachers. So we don't have yours done yet. So it's going to be up there, I'm told, fairly soon. And uh, I've already been in chats with the right people about that. But soon there'll be a sample lesson up on YouTube. But it's not there quite yet. Now, for those of you that might be wondering about the structure of the course, how, how is this class arranged and organized? I would say this. I, I recorded geometry two years ago. And the geometry book and the pre-calculus book were largely written by the same people. They are structured the same way. A lot in common as far as that goes. And we've gotten a lot of feedback on geometry. And most of the feedback says we're good with the, the way it's arranged, with the, the number of quizzes, the number of tests, the semester exams. And all of this is going uh, very smoothly. We, we like that. So pre-calculus is going to be very, very similar in the number of quizzes, the number of tests. There's going to be semester exams. And uh, hey, if it works, let's use it again. Now, one of the things that's very, very important when it comes to this particular course is your student is going to need a graphing calculator. Now, in the studio, I use this beautiful machine. This is a TI-84 Plus Color Edition. This is a fairly top-of-the-line calculator, brand new. It costs close to $150. You don't actually need this particular model. This is what's used in the textbook. This is what's used on the video course. But really, any TI-84 or even an 83 will do. Now, the newer 84s have a little bit better screen resolution and more memory. But really, functionally, they're all pretty much the same. And so I will say, though, it is a necessary thing. It is something that your, your student is going to want to have and need to have. Believe me, they're going to want to have it because they're not going to want to be without one. Now, uh, it's possible, too, that new calculators are going to be developed. And for all I know, three weeks after I record the last lesson, which actually still hasn't happened yet, there might be the brand new TI-84 something or other different. And hopefully, it'll be compatible. But right now, we're using the best that's out there for high school students. If you do have any uh, calculator questions, you can put them on my uh, Video Teacher Homeschool Facebook page, and I'll be happy to answer them there. If you think of something seven or eight days from now, it's OK. I don't mind answering those questions. Now, there's another really awesome tool out there that most homeschoolers are really going to like because they're like normal people. It's free, no charge. You can get online, go to desmos.com calculator. And we're going to use the Desmos calculator with some regularity for certain things throughout the course. Now, this is not, I must say, this is not a substitute for the graphing calculator. It does many of the things the graphing calculator does, but it does not do all of them. And so I would encourage you and your student to have both the graphing calculator and be becoming familiar with the Desmos calculator. It's a great a lot of great things. It does have some features that TI-84 doesn't have, although it does lack a number. So Again, I do want to emphasize the need for both of them. Now, when I did math six, all right, I've got a picture of my family, my children here. Uh, when I did math six, the shortest of my daughters, the youngest of them, Rebecca, uh, was on the set with me for a couple of lessons. And that went over really well. And people thought, oh, that's pretty cool. You've got like your own child in there. So when I did geometry, I got Rachel, who's the one on the left. And she helped me out with some lessons 
in geometry. Well, now my son, the blonde, and, and yes, yes, that is legitimate genetics there, even though none of the rest of us have blonde hair. Uh, my mother had it. That's probably where I got it from. But still, Daniel's going to help me out with pre-calculus. He's actually taking pre-calculus right now, although he has to use the first edition book, unfortunately. He doesn't get to use the new book. Can't win them all. He's still learning. He has a good teacher. It's all good. But anyway, Daniel, my son, is going to make an appearance. And yes, I am. Believe it or not, I am old enough to have a married child. I know that may seem stunning if you know me and my beautiful, young-looking wife. Um, but yes, well, I do have a son-in-law now. It's kind of kind of cool. A couple of interesting things about the course. Uh, another feature is we have a series of segments we call the Math Applied Segments. And the Math Applied Segments are used to help students see, with some, some cool visuals, how to solve certain kinds of problems, usually ones of a practical nature, uh, or what many like to call word problems. I like to call them practical problems because that sounds better. It doesn't have that negative connotation that generations of people have stuck on word problems. Word problems are good things. So are fractions, by the way. A lot of people get kind of hung up on those too. But the applied math or math applied segments are uh, really kind of neat. I think you'll, your student will enjoy them. And uh, I enjoy them. I help to write them. I help to produce them. Not, not really produce them. I help to write them. Or at least they came to me and helped let me proofread them a little bit. So uh, let me also add some academic points to the course. This, this pre-calculus class is it's a college prep course. It really is. Um, now, I know some, some people might go so far as to call it an honors level course. It's not really designed to be an honors level course. There are such things out there in the educational realm. This is really a course for students who have completed geometry. They've completed algebra 2 start to finish, and now they're ready for the next course. Now, I put a, a slide up here with a very important quotation on it. It says, a student who completes this course with a decent mastery of the material should be ready, should be ready to take a college Calc 1 course as his or her next math class. Uh, the authors of the textbook have designed it that way, that if you get through all 12 chapters, you do it fairly well, you know what's going on, you would be able to walk into a Calc 1 classroom next and be ready to succeed in that classroom. That's really the academic level that we're talking about here. And I know unlike geometry and definitely unlike Math 6, where pretty much everybody takes it, whether they're good in math or not, whether they like math or don't like math, although that is kind of a, a horrible thought. But um, pre-calculus, we understand for most students, is going to be an elective. Now, if, if you say at my home school it's not an elective, my child has to take it. I'm okay with that. But the, uh, it, it is essentially an elective. We know that not as many students are going to take this as geometry, and so it is aimed for a college prep student. Now, how do we get there? Now, I know Mr. Harmon, if you watched his Facebook Live earlier in the week, he talked about the importance of completing the course, getting from the first chapter to the last chapter. Um, Definitely, if your child is going to take this, they really need to have completed geometry or pretty well nigh close to all of it, and likewise algebra too, or again, pretty well nigh close to all of it. Um, there is review in the first half of the book of some of the things in geometry and some of the things in algebra too. I will move through that fairly quickly because, again, I'm assuming the students have, have encountered it before, have learned about it before, but we're going we're gonna to hustle through it. Now, also, that little, little quote I had up there, if you're going to take Calc 1, if you're, if you're intending for your child to take Calc 1, which I, I think is a great thing, you really do want to finish the course. Some of the most important concepts for a good foundation to take Calc 1, quite frankly, are in the last chapter, <laughs> chapter 12. So again, I want you to, to think of this as, as a 180-day course. You want to finish all 180 days if at all possible. Now, a few other things. Uh, testing. There will be tests. I know, big surprise. But there will be tests in the course, and those tests are going to be, uh, again, if you've taken geometry, if you've used that course, the length of the test, the, the difficulty of the test in relation to the difficulty of what you saw in the video, not really going to be anything substantially different there. One thing that is going to be different, though, is the grading. Uh, the nature of pre-calculus is such that there are a lot of things that, even though this is an online course, you can't do online. If I say draw the, the graph of sine 2x plus 7, 
you, you can't do that very well online. Your, your child's going to have to take a piece of paper, graph paper, regular paper, whatever, and, and draw it. They're going to they're have to create the graph. We're going to have answers that are something like 7 pi over 12. Kind of hard to type in 7 pi over 12 online. We understand that. So there is going to be some need for the parent or the facilitator to grade the test, or at least to grade part of the test. Some of it will be true, false, multiple choice, multiple response, short answer, enter a number, things that we can do on a computer. But just be prepared as a parent that you are going to be, need to do some grading of quizzes and tests. Not a whole lot. We'll give you the answer keys. We'll make it as easy as possible for you. But that is going to be something that you'll, you'll need to encounter. And really, we have to do that because, again, we want the grade in the course to, to be reflective of the material and the objectives. And so that's something that we, we just sort of have to do. In geometry, you had to grade the proofs. You had to grade the constructions. There's just no way to do that on a computer. It's just the way it is. Let me throw in one final thought, and then I understand Ben's going to come up and ask me some questions. This is going to be an online-only course. At the present time, there are no plans to put it on DVD. This is also true with Spanish 3, and if Mrs. Coleman wants to remark on that, I'll let her do that. But this is going to be an online-only class, and I hope, I really do hope, that a lot of students take this course. It's going to be of great benefit. And, you know, there, there's just so much about mathematics that's important. And there's really a lot about mathematics that points us back to our worldview and about what God has done and what God has created. We're going to bring that out, too.